So I hope this video is going to be helpful. I made a video recently about the Maverick, which most people have seen, and you can see it here. And if you haven't seen it, then it's probably better off that you don't watch it because I made a lot of people upset. I was a bit upset about the Maverick. Now, that doesn't mean that a lot of people aren't interested in the Maverick, and there are a lot of people who are very interested in the Maverick, but I just wanna go over a few things. In this video, I wanna tell you why you should probably hold off on buying a new 2022 Ford Maverick. Now, most people who watch that video probably wouldn't give me another chance in hell all right, and, and give me any type of credibility to speak ever again about the Ford Maverick, but this video is actually based about facts that anyone can look up and anyone can see. It's not anything that's a subjective point of view. This is actual stuff that a buyer can look up when they want to go and purchase a new vehicle. This is all public information. First, I want to start this video uh, about explaining what Ford is saying and what you expect as a buyer from the Maverick, from the 2022 Ford Maverick. Okay, so I think the biggest in, in my opinion, probably the most controversial selling point of the Ford Maverick is the fact that it has a starting price of around $20,000. Now, personally, I think that is BS, and I'll explain a little bit later in the video why that is. But next, I think the biggest selling point for the Maverick that Ford wants to push is the fact that it has a hybrid powertrain. Now, compared to all the other Ford vehicles, the Maverick is the only other truck that offers a hybrid powertrain next to the F-150. So. The only other small truck in Ford's lineup, the Ranger, only has one engine option, which is quite honestly, don't even know how they get away with that. But regardless of that, if you want a hybrid powertrain in a small truck, you have no you have no choice but to get a Maverick, even if you did want a little bit more, I mean, little bit more space of the Ranger. So then there's that. And then there's kind of a third big selling point, which is the overall dimensions of the vehicle. I think that's the third big selling point here for the, the Maverick. Now, Ford's like, oh yes, it's the smallest of all their vehicles, and it is. But check this out, check this image right here. We're talking about less than a foot smaller than a Ranger, and that is from the very front of the Ranger to the very back, compared to the very front of the uh, Maverick to the back less than a foot and we're talking about inches taller than the maverick that the ranger is i mean inches that's it the ranger is not that much bigger of a vehicle it is still a small truck it is nowhere near as capable as f-150 and if you even look at the at the picture here the f-150 is noticeably sizably bigger in dimensions all the way around than a ranger so you're really not getting all that much less of a truck. At least it doesn't seem you're getting as less of a truck than Ford claims you're getting. Now with all that said, a lot of people complain, well, you know, the Maverick's smaller than the Ranger, so that's better, because I want a small truck. Or the Maverick's smaller than a Ridgeline, because that's better, I want a small truck. Honestly, the Maverick isn't that much smaller. And next to the Maverick, the Ranger is the next smallest vehicle you can get in terms of a truck like or a truck vehicle compared to the Maverick. All the competition, i.e. the uh, Toyota Tacoma, the Honda Ridgeline, and the Chevrolet Colorado, they are actually a couple inches longer than a, uh, than a Ford Ranger. So the Ford Ranger is actually going to be your smallest choice next to the Maverick which once again is only less than a foot longer than a Maverick. It is not that much bigger. We're not talking, we're not talking Maverick to F-250, okay? That's a massive difference. We're talking less than a foot. So all the other options are only within a couple inches bigger, give or take, than the Ranger. So your competition really isn't that much different in size. Also, your competition offers hybrid powertrains as well. You know, you're not just stuck with the Maverick. 
Now I think a lot of reason why people are sticking with the Maverick is because they're trying to be brand loyal to Ford. And this is Ford's only vehicle that has a power, you know, it's Ford's only small truck that has uh, a hybrid powertrain. You know, it, it's really, if you're looking for a hybrid vehicle, which mm, I think a lot of people will appreciate a hybrid over a full EV, including myself. I find hybrids to be a good blend between a more economical vehicle while increasing performance. I personally love hybrids when they're, when they're utilized correctly. But regardless of all that, what you're looking at is a vehicle that's not so much different than the competition. You know, Ford, like they, you know, the, by definition of Maverick is something that's supposed to be different and, and stand out from the bunch. It's really not that much different. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, we can talk about we can talk about why the Maverick even is the biggest deal as it is, and that's because of Ford's marketing. I swear, Ford has spent so much time and, and resources on marketing lately, which is the only thing that's, I think, doing anything good for them. Their marketing team is doing, I would say, a better job than anything else in the company because they're making these vehicles seem so much better than they really are. You know, I think Ford's marketing is is outstanding, quite honestly. If you want me to be honest, because they're doing a very good job at convincing future buyers of this Maverick that it's going to be so much better than the competition. Of course, um, marketing is a big deal when it comes to selling a product. So, you know, Ford is doing an excellent job with marketing. I can't, I can't even get mad at them there because most people now see the Maverick as this completely different vehicle from the competition. Like there's nothing else like it. So I just quickly wanted to throw that in there because that I think is a big reason why the Maverick even gets the type of attention it's getting already. You know, that's kind of the thing where I literally only had the, I, I think I was the only negative um, video on, on YouTube entirely about the Maverick in terms of my opinion, because if you've noticed, most of the vehicles, most of the videos that had popped up on YouTube, they were all press vehicles. All those videos were under an embargo. They all dropped the same day Ford, um, you know, let the you know let the embargo expired. So, you know, all those all those people had to say something nice about. It. They're all you know automotive reviewers, and they had to say something nice because that's how they keep getting to review vehicles, right? So they're not gonna tell you that, okay, I have extreme concerns over something or another. They're gonna be like, oh no, this is nice here. You know, this could be a little bit better there, but overall it's nice. And Ford's like, oh good, free marketing, great. So that's why I want to mention that. Now, I think this is where the biggest issue of the Maverick's gonna come into play. It's reliability. Now, a lot of people have already uh, you know, are a little bit skeptical about the, the reliability of the Maverick considering Ford has, you know, claimed that the starting price of the Maverick is $20,000. I think $20,000 is mm, optimistic. I, okay, I'll get into that in a minute, but here comes to why I don't think if Ford keeps, if Ford can actually offer the Maverick at $20,000 starting, why it's going to be reliable. Now, it's said that the Ford Maverick is built on the same platform as the Bronco Sport. Cool. Take a look at the starting price of a Bronco Sport. We're looking at just over $27,000 for a Bronco Sport, for a base Bronco Sport, right? So you're not getting too much of anything there. How is Ford going to build this vehicle, which is going to be slightly larger than a Bronco Sport? It's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, manufacture because of the, the way the body is you know you're not just making a, a completely square shell you have to kind of make that you know the panels are a little bit more complex to make the bed area of the Maverick so I can't imagine that making the Maverick is cheaper than making the Bronco Sport so then with that said how is Ford going to keep the price of the Maverick almost eight thousand dollars less than the Bronco Sport so that raises some questions. Either the Bronco Sport is extremely overpriced for what it is, and Ford was doing that to counterbalance the potential buyers of the low-priced Maverick, or 
somewhere, somehow, Ford's saving money on the Maverick, and the only way I could think they can do that is cutting corners. Because quite honestly, I don't understand how a company can save almost $8,000 between two very similar vehicles. They're built on the same platform. They have same powertrain options. $8,000 difference. In a world where cars are becoming incre increasingly more expensive, that is just, that's a hard one for me to grasp. Now, it's very possible that Ford could easily had just, you know, made a couple very wise decisions and are able to, you know, keep the price on the Maverick low and still not sacrifice reliability. I, for one, don't believe that. Now, I think, I really do think the, the Maverick is going to experience a lot of issues in the first few years of it coming out because I think Ford is going, I think Ford has cut corners on some things and you know, it, they're gonna figure it out. I think there's gonna be a heck of a lot of recalls on the Maverick. I think they're gonna be a heck of a lot of TSBs on the Maverick over the first few years of production. I think it's gonna be a rough one, especially now with production shortages of like everything, which now leads me to one final point of, of all of this is I don't think Ford is going to keep the price starting price at twenty thousand dollars. Now that's a bold claim of me, and I don't and I'm not saying I'm right, and I'm not saying they're not going to keep it at twenty thousand dollars. But hopefully, what Ford doesn't do is stick it to all their customers. Now there are a lot of people in my other video who said they they claim they've already pre-ordered their Maverick. One thing pre-ordering your vehicle doesn't do is reserve that price that price can fluctuate that price can go up you know if you pre-order something for let's say you pre-order the maverick maybe you got a couple options you're like twenty four thousand dollars i think what's going to happen is by the time people actually take delivery of the maverick the price could go up and i think that would be an insane that would be horrible that would be very bad for ford to do now ford has done some very sketchy stuff over the years um, you know, I think in recent time they haven't done anything too ridiculous, but that would definitely be a reason I would never support Ford in buying another new vehicle because that's just wrong. That's just downright lying to your customers. And I think that's a lot of people who really want a Maverick are people who are brand loyal to Ford, but want the type of vehicle the Maverick offers, right? So it would be a very sad day if Ford stuck it to all the customers and you know, everyone's like, all right, cool. Um, get my new Maverick next week and wait, why is that why did it go up for five, six thousand dollars? What happened here? I, I pre-ordered mine at twenty-four thousand. Now I'm now I'm twenty-eight thousand dollars? What happened? Once again, I just kinda have a hard time understanding how Ford has saved eight thousand dollars between a base Maverick and a base Bronco Sport built on the same chassis. Pretty sure the Maverick is a little bit more of a you know, harder vehicle to, a little bit more expensive to produce because of the way it's shaped, the way it's designed. Now, of course, I could be wrong about all of this, and the Maverick could be the best vehicle of 2022 on Ford, but I just feel like there's something not good about this. You know, this is just using some basic common sense and logic and information that is currently available, which is why I want to make this video, because a lot of people I feel like are getting very excited over this vehicle and I have legitimate concerns for them. I don't think this vehicle is gonna be nearly as good as Ford is saying it is, which is why Ford's marketing is doing an insanely good job. You know, the competition offers very similar vehicles for not that much more. And honestly, I think unless you're getting an engine, a steering wheel, and four wheels, I don't see how you could really get a Maverick for $20,000. You know, if you really do just want a basic vehicle for truck purposes, then you'd probably just go and buy a pre-owned um, truck, you know, and, and save yourself even more money. You can get a certified pre-owned vehicle with an extended warranty and all that. It can still be a good truck, do what you need it to do, and save yourself money over the new Ford Maverick. The Ford Maverick, I think, is becoming the icing on the cake when it comes to Ford marketing. I mean, they've gone to the extent of even making the Mach-E Mustang, which is not what the Mustang should be. It should just be the Ford Mach-E. You know, it's a good vehicle. The branding's bad. Branding, and they're doing all of this because what, they're, what I feel like they're doing is they're making, they're taking all these vehicles that appeal to a group of people like me 
you know, a minority group, a minority section of their market, they're branding them as such, but the vehicles themselves are actually something that would, um, you know, that would attract buyers from different sides of the market. So now they have all of these other type of buyers coming in buying their Mustang, which is nothing more as a brand. This is a Mustang. The mach -E is not a Mustang. Regardless of that little tangent, I think that's just a good example of what Ford has done with marketing and why I think you should hold off on the 2022 Ford Maverick. So with any luck, I hope this video was much more informal than my last Maverick video. And I hope this is actually gonna be helping some future buyers or some people who were thinking about the new Ford Maverick and that this video helps them make an educated choice on their next vehicle purchase. But with that said, that will be it for this video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up share with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this then go ahead subscribe to the channel and keep a lookout for the next true ford enthusiast video